In this video, we're going to be starting with a graph where we can clearly see the y-intercept and then rewriting that in slope-intercept form. And then also, if we have a start amount on like a word problem or story problem, and then also another piece of information, also rewriting that as an equation in slope-intercept form. Let's go ahead and review slope-intercept form. The coefficient or the number in front of the x or the number that's in the place of the m, that's going to be the slope or the rate. And then the constant term, the one that's being added or subtracted to the x, that is going to be the y-intercept or start amount. Remember slope, that's going to be rise over run. And then the y-intercept is an ordered pair or a coordinate where we have 0 for the x value. And then the y value, that is the y-intercept. Quick bird's eye view here of the different forms of linear equations, slope intercept form, that's one we're working on. There's two different point slope forms, and then there's also a standard form. We do need to make sure that we're able to identify when we're going to use them, and then strategies that we use for graphing and that type of stuff. So y equals mx plus b for slope intercept form, and then y equals m, x minus x1 plus y1 is one version of the point slope form, and then another common version is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. This y1 x1 that is a point on the line and then m is still the slope same as in slope intercept form. Standard form that's going to be ax plus by equals c. The a, the b, and the c are going to be replaced with numbers. And this one's fairly easy to identify. You have an x, a y, then the equal sign. Whereas both of these ones they start with y equals. Let's look at an example here. Now we have a graph and it's easy to see what the y-intercept is. So we're going to use slope intercept form. So we know an in the y-intercept. So we use slope intercept form. So the only other piece of information we need to know is the slope there. So remember slope, that's going to be rise over run. In order to find the rise over run or the slope, we are looking for nice points on the graph. So let's look here, starting from left to right. Uh, there's one right there. Keep going. No, no, no. There's one there. No, 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 and another one there. Some have like up to five or six nice points. Some only have two. This one happens to have three. Now remember nice points, they go, go through a horizontal and a vertical line. So like on this one here, we know that's exactly a six on the Y and a three on the X. Whereas here, we know that that's gonna be a two on the X, but we're not sure what that's gonna be on the Y or like this one here, four exactly there, but not quite sure what that's gonna be on the X. So nice points, they go through a horizontal and a vertical line. They go through the grid lines. So here we go, rise over run. We're gonna start with this point here and go to this point here. So we're gonna count up one, two, three, four. So that's our rise and then over one, two, three. And that's gonna be our run. Boom, there's our slope, rise over run. So now that we know the slope is rise over run, we're ready to go ahead and start filling in our slope intercept form. Again, the slope is going to replace the M, so that's going to be the four thirds. And then the B, that's going to be replaced with a Y intercept. So look on the Y axis, there's the Y intercept right there at a two. So the Y intercept is going to be a two. So our B is going to be a two. And there's our answer there. There's the equation of this line here. Y equals four thirds X plus two. All right, let's have you go ahead and try this one out on your own. Pause the video, then come on back, see how you did. So here we have an airplane gliding. We can easily see what the y-intercept is. It's going to be an 18. So we know we're going to use slope intercept form and we already know the y-intercept. So we just need to find the slope. So in order to find slope, again, we're going to look for two nice points. There's two right there. This one actually has four. We got this one there. No, 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 that one there. And we got one there and then one there at the nine. So remember slope, that's your rise over run. You only need two points for that. You could use another good pair would be the 18 and then the nine down here. So you just count down and then over. But in this case, we'll just use these first two that are closest together. So here we go. We're going to count down and then we're going to count over. Okay, so how many did it go down? Now this one might be a little tricky. It is down six or a negative six. So remember this Y scale here, it goes by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, right? It goes by threes. So if you're going to count down two squares, each square is worth three. So it's down three and then six. And then if it kept going down nine, 12, 15, right? Um, or you could just say it went down two and then each square is three. So two times three, six. Okay. And then the X is pretty easy. The X scale just goes by one. So that's going to be an over three. 
So we know the slope is going to be a negative 2. So now we're ready to go ahead and fill in our slope intercept form, right? The m is going to be what our slope is, the coefficient. We already know that's a negative 2. Next up, find that y intercept, and that's going to be right there at the 18. So our y intercept, the b, is going to be an 18. So that's going to replace the b there. So, and that's all there is to it. Remember, if you know what the y intercept is, you're going to use slope intercept form. Just find the slope, and you're good to go. So y equals negative 2x plus 18. All right, so here we're going to write an equation for a line that goes through these two points here, 0, 4, and 3, 10. Now, do notice we do have a y-intercept here. So anytime you have a 0 in the x position of your ordered pairs, then the y value, that is your y-intercept. The y-axis is where x is 0. So we know the y-intercept is going to be a 4. So we know the y-intercept, and we can find the slope. So we're going to use slope-intercept form. So here we go. And we already know what the y-intercept is right we already know what value is going to replace the b that's going to be the four right there so we have a four there next up we need to calculate that slope so remember slope that's going to be the rise over run so for figuring this out a couple of different ways of doing it you can do it similar to how we did it with the graphs except instead of counting like squares on the grid you just count numbers so for the rise that's going to be the y value so remember it's x y and then x y and so for the y values the second number of each ordered pair we're going from 4 to 10. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? So that's six more numbers or it went up six. So there's our rise there. Now for the run, same trick, except we're looking at the first of the numbers, 0 and 3. So from 0 to 3, this one's pretty easy, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? It went over 3. So there's our slope there. Now, if you did want to use the slope formula, right, y, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we're going to call this point 1, and this is going to be point 2. So x2, y2, x1, y1. So the y2, that's going to be replaced with a 10. And then the y1 gets replaced with the 4. And then for the x2, that's the second point, and it's going to be the x value, which is a 3. And then this is going to be the first point, and then the x value, that's a 0 there. So 10 minus 4, that makes 6. 3 minus 0 makes 3. So we end up with the same value anyhow. So the slope is going to be a 2 here. And boom, there's 2. So now our equation that goes through these two points here, it's y equals 2x plus 4. All right, let's go ahead and have you try this one out on your own. Pause the video, then come on back, see how you did. We're going to write an equation for a line through these two points here, 0, 2, and 4, negative 10. So we do notice that we do have a y-intercept here. So again, the y value next to when x is 0, that's your y-axis. It's on the y-axis. x is 0 puts you on the y-axis, so we know 2 is going to be the y-intercept. And then between two points, we can find slope. So we're going to use slope intercept form because that's the information we have and then are going to find right so there we go we're going to replace the b with a y intercept so b is going to equal in this case two right so a two go gets replaced there for the b and then next up we do need to calculate slope again that's rise over run and we can do this similar to on a graph right so on a graph we just count squares uh, for your rise you're looking at the y value so from 2 to negative 10 so we start at 2 and then count backwards to 10 so that'd be 2 1 0 negative 1 negative 2 all the way down to negative 10 so that's actually going to go down 12 and you can think like temperature if you want you start at 2 degrees above 0 and then you ended at 10 degrees below 0 so the temperature got colder by 12 degrees so that's a down 12 and then for the run that one's not too bad we're looking at the x's we're starting at zero we're ending at four is so a zero one two three four right it went over four so that'll be our run there now if you did want to use the slope formula you could this is the y value from the second point so that's going to be replaced with a 10 now the y value from the first point that's going to be replaced with a 2 x value from the second point that's going to be a 4 and then the x value from the first point that's going to be a 0 there so negative 10 minus 2 pay ten dollars pay another two dollars you're gonna have to pay a total of twelve dollars right and then four minus zero that just makes four there and then we go ahead and simplify this down we have a negative divided by a positive so that's going to be negative and then 12 divided by four makes negative three so there's our slope there so the equation for the line through these two points y equals negative three x plus two 
So here we go. We're going to be saving money and we're putting in the same amount of money each month, right? At the beginning of the year, we have 478. And then we also have another piece of information. By the fourth month, now we have $578. So we do have a start amount. So start amounts and Y intercepts are kind of basically the same thing. So we know we're going to use slope intercept form. Now on this one here, it says X for months. So that's going to be our independent variable and S for savings. That's going to be our dependent variable because savings depends on number of months. So let's start out here. We're going to find our B or our start amount. That's going to replace the B there. It says at the beginning of the year, right? Beginning or start amount there, 478. So that replaces the B there. Now we need to find our rate or our slope type idea and we are still doing like a rise over run type idea, right? So how much in those four months, how much did we save, right? So we started at 478 and then we ended at 578. So we just subtract those two numbers and that's going to give us another $100 in the bank. Okay. And then how long did that take? How many months did that take? Well, that took four months says so right here, four months. So we did a hundred dollars in four months. And so how much were we, were we putting in each month? Well, divide, right? And that makes $25 each month. So 25 goes in for there. Now on any of these word type problems, you can make a, this is a summary statement for what's going on up here. So your savings is you're putting in $25 every month, remember X is months, starting at $478. So this is a summary statement of what's going on up here. All right, so this week, the price of a, a certain stock is $23 per share for each share, and it's declining at a constant rate. So in three weeks, the price will be $17, okay? So we do have a start amount, and we are going to find the, the rate or the slope here. So we're going to use slope intercept form, right? The start amount is the, the Y intercept. Those two ideas are, are really similar, right? And we're going to use P for price of the stock. So P goes in for our dependent variable and then X, that's going to be the number of weeks. So that's just going to stay as, as an X there. You could use like W for weeks or whatever your teacher wants you to use for your variables. So the start amount, that's going to be your B or your Y intercept. And that's this week starting right now, $23. So we know 23 goes in, it replaces the B. Next up, finding the rate or the slope. We're still doing rise over run. So in this case here to find the, the rise, well, you're starting at $23 and you're going to end at $17, right? So that's going down a little bit. And then how much is it going down? We'll subtract the two numbers, right? 23 and 17 subtracted, or you can just do 17. That's your Y2 minus the Y1 there. And that's going to be down $6. And you could also use kind of common sense, right? And 23 count down to 17 or subtract them and just know it went down. So it's going to be negative. And then how long did it take for that to happen? What's our run? Well, it took three weeks. So boom, there we go there. And here we have a negative divided by a positive. So that's going to be a negative. And then six divided by three makes negative two. Boom. And there's our equation there, right? And this is a summary statement, right? Because the price is going down $2 per week. X is weeks uh, starting at $23. Okay. So this summarizes what's going on up here. For this example here, let's have you go ahead and try this out on your own. Pause the video and then come on back and see how you did. So with this, we are assuming that the submarine is going up at a constant rate. It's starting at 1600 under the water and it's ascending for five hours. Ascending means it's going up, right? And then after five hours, they're at 1,550 feet below the surface of the water. So we do know the start amount or the Y intercept, and then we're going to find the rate, right? So, or the slope, right? So slope intercept form. So here we go. We're using D for depth. Says so right here, D for depth, and then X for number of hours. So so our dependent variable is going to be a D and we're just keeping X as our independent variable. You could use H for hours or T for time and hours if you wanted to. Okay. So anyhow, we, we know that the B that's going to be your start amount, right? And it says right here starts at 1600 under the water, right? Under that's going to be negative. So it's going to be under the water, 1600 feet. So there we go. So it's a negative or a minus 1600 and that's what gets replaced with the B there. We don't write plus a negative. You just write minus. Okay. Next up, rate or slope. Rate is still going to be um, rise over run. And in this case here, we're starting at 1600 and then we're going up to 1550, right? So in order to figure out how much that change was, you subtract those two numbers. So in this case here, that was up 
50, in this case, feet here, if we want to refer back to like what we're actually talking about. And then how long did that take? Well, it says right here, five hours, okay? So that's going to be our run is going to be five hours. So here we go, 50 divided by five, ah, it's not, not too tricky of a one, right? Five divided by five is, a, is one with a zero on the end makes 10, okay? So here we go. So the depth is, it's going up, ascending 10 feet per uh, what do we got here? Uh, hours, right? Right. 10 per hour uh, starting under the water, 1600 feet. Right. So just remember, uh, just quick wrap up here, slope intercept form that that coefficient in front of your independent variable, the 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 number in front there or being multiplied by your independent variable. That's your slope or your rate slope. If you're just like a generic like coordinate points or a graph, we're going to call it rate or think rate type ideas when we have a word problem. And then the B, that constant term, that's going to be your Y intercept on just a generic one or it's going to be the start amount. If you're thinking like on a word problem or something like that, remember that your Y intercept it's always going to be a zero on the X and then the whatever value the Y value is that's going to be that that Y intercept or start amount as well because zero is is starting right and then slope right that's rise over run it's your change in Y's over change in X's right this is a Greek letter Delta it looks like a triangle but it just means change in so we just say out loud change in Y's over change in X's there and then you could also use the the slope formula there